Welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to be taking you through the best settings for the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 UCDM. This is their 27 inch 4K 240Hz QD OLED monitor. We'll set the screen up in both SDR and HDR usage as well as go through things like the OLED care and game options as well. So we've got the screen at factory default settings at the moment and we're going to set the screen up for SDR mode to start with. So if you come into the main menu, the first setting we're going to change is the preset mode. They're available in the game visual menu. We're actually going to move to the user mode here and then we're going to come back out and we're going to go into the image section to start with. We're going to enable the uniform brightness mode. Uniform brightness will ensure that as your content and your window sizes change, the brightness remains consistent. So we're going to enable that. That's great for desktop applications and SDR usage. It can get a little bit brighter with uniform brightness turned off if you're going to be using the screen for games and multimedia in SDR. We prefer to leave this turned on though. We're going to adjust the brightness setting. We're going to turn that down from a setting of 100 down to 43. That will give you a luminance of around 120 nits. If you do want it a bit higher, you can set it at around 55 for 150 nits or 76 for 200 nits. We're just gonna leave that on 43 for now, but feel free to set that at whatever's comfortable for your own preferences and your own ambient lighting conditions. Contrast can stay on a setting of 80. We'll come back to OLED anti-flicker, HDR and things in a minute. The default in most of the modes is 6,500K. It has defaulted to user here because we're in the user preset mode and we're gonna turn these down to red 95, green 99 and we'll leave it blue on 100. So 95, 99, 100. That will give you a white point very close to 6,500 Kelvin. Saturation can stay on default, six axis, no need to change that. Gamma, just check that that is set to 2.2. That is fine as well. So those are gonna be the optimal settings for SDR. Now you've got a choice then between which color space you want to use. The default is the wide gamut mode that will look more saturated and colorful. But if you want more accurate settings for SDR and sRGB content, then you can simply switch to the sRGB mode here, leave everything else as it was, the same user color temperature, the same brightness, contrast and everything, but that will operate the screen in the sRGB color space instead. So you can switch here between sRGB or wide gamut mode, depending on whether you want the more vivid and saturated appearance that wide gamut offers or the more accurate colors and color reproduction for SDR content that sRGB mode offers. So that's the screen set up for SDR. We're just gonna do a couple of other things as well here. So we'll just talk about the gaming settings. You can enable variable refresh rate here if you want to use NVIDIA G-Sync or AMD FreeSync. The shadow boost setting is quite good for increasing the darker and mid gray shades. Um, you can experiment with this depending on your game. If you're playing a lot of dark games, you might find that switching this up to one of the higher settings helps bring out some of that shadow detail. For desktop applications and just general usage, we'd leave that turned off. In the image section, the OLED anti-flicker option might be useful if you experience any flicker during VRR situations. You can turn it up to middle or high if you do. Just experiment with that if you find any problems at all. The other general setting we might want to change is in the system setup. You can come down to the power sync setting. Just make sure that that's enabled. That will enable the HDMI CEC feature and auto switch over to that input when it detects a powered on HDMI device like a games console or whatever. We'll have a look at the OLED care settings as well. There's loads available in this menu you're going to want to have as many of these turned on as possible. You'll see that most of them are in fact turned on by default anyway. Just leave those all on unless you experience any problems with any of them or find them distracting. For instance, if you find the screen move annoying and you spot that happening, you could turn that down to a lower setting or maybe even turn it off. But for the best settings to avoid burn-in and image retention, just leave as many of these things on as possible. The one that you might also want to enable is the Neo proximity sensor. So that's the motion sensor that detects whether you're using the screen or not. You can turn that off and set the distance or you can run the tailored mode which will detect how far away you are from the screen and set that as the usage distance as well. So that's a really handy feature. We'd recommend turning that on to one of the modes, potentially the custom mode just to set that up as you like. 
We'll also set the screen up now for HDR usage. So we've enabled HDR now in Windows Display Settings. As a reminder, only enable HDR when you're actually going to be viewing HDR content. Otherwise, just leave it running in SDR mode. In here, there's a few settings that you can change. Mostly they're in the image section now. You'll see that there's two options for HDR format, HDR10 and Dolby Vision. We'd recommend for PC just leaving this on HDR10. That will give you access to more modes and more settings. If you're going to be using a Dolby Vision capable device like an Xbox Series X, for instance, then you can enable the Dolby Vision mode instead and play games in Dolby Vision if you'd like. Check out our review for all the measurements and data associated with all of these HDR modes, by the way. So for PC usage, we'd recommend just staying on HDR10 mode. And then in the HDR settings section, you've got various different presets and you've got two extra settings down at the bottom as well. Most likely to be preferable for most people we think would be the console HDR mode. So we're gonna to switch to that. We're going to enable adjustable HDR and dynamic brightness boost. You'll get a warning about those, but this will allow us to configure the screen to reach a slightly brighter HDR performance in this mode, as well as tweak a couple of things with the color temperature as well. So with those two enabled and console HDR active, we'll leave brightness at 100, that will give you the brightest performance, but we're going to come back out into the color menu, go to color temperature and switch to the user mode and just tweak this slightly to 98 red, 99 green, and 100 blue. That will just give you a slightly improved white point and color temperature for the grayscale as well, just correcting some of the minor imbalance that there is in this mode by default. By having this dynamic brightness boost setting enabled for console HDR, it will give you a brighter overall HDR experience than with that turned off. So we'd recommend that and we expect most people will prefer that setup as well. And that is it really for both SDR and HDR usage. Don't forget to check out our review that's linked below for loads more testing and data for this screen. If you've got any questions, please feel free to let us know in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like as well if you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.